Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about now Tropical Storm Fred, which was the Tropical Depression yesterday, and then only the Invest the other day. It is developing really fast, and this is all unfolding. We're going to go over all of the things that you need to know about Tropical Storm Fred in this video. <music> Now before I get into things, be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below because those two things help me out so much and also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know do you think this one could become a hurricane or do you think it'll stay underneath that hurricane status? Let me know in the comments down below and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we are looking at some of this impressive satellite imagery here and as you can see this was just a few hours ago actually and this one really really was looking good i'm not gonna lie here uh we saw this storm really getting it to act together this was approximately 1 a.m or so it was a little bit um tightly organized there underneath puerto rico as you can see uh, but it was very strong and it did have very tall clouds there was some outer bands already impacting dominican republic as well but by the time we reach about the time I'm making this video, you can see it's kind of unwinded a little bit. We can see that it's kind of become more loosened and a little bit less organized. Also, those clouds are a little bit less tall as well. So this is still a very strong storm. It's still a tropical storm. However, it just does not look as good as it did about five hours ago. And this is all going according to how we planned and how we really expected things to go, by the way. Uh, as it gets closer and closer to Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, we expect this one to weaken dramatically, actually, down to below tropical storm status. That is what we expect at this point. Here's the low pressure location, again, as of the time I'm making this video. And as you can see, it's right in between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, which is not a good place to be for a tropical storm, by the way. It is going to, as we're taking a look at the cone forecast here from the National Hurricane Center, it's expected to go straight over Dominican Republic, uh, and it will become a tropical depression very fast, although they do have tropical storm warnings up for Dominican Republic. Uh, they have tropical storm watches up there for a lot of the southern Bahamas there, and then also Haiti. We have none up yet for Cuba or Florida, although we do expect a tropical storm to develop just north of Cuba again after it re-enters uh, the Caribbean waters there after Haiti, uh, and then it likely will stay around that until it hits the Florida Keys. I think the best chance for this one to become a hurricane is after it's kind of past the Florida Keys and over the Gulf there. If it tracks a little bit further from Florida, I think it does have a chance to become a hurricane there in the Gulf because uh, there is that chance that it goes to the very far western side of that cone. And if it did, I think it would have a much better shot at becoming a hurricane because less land interaction and more time over those warm Gulf Waters. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look here at the probability model here from the European model. Uh, we're going to take a look at the chances of tropical depression, tropical storm. We're even going to take a look at that second tropical cyclone which could take pretty much an identical track and hit Florida as well. And then we're going to move on and take a look at some spaghetti model guidance and impacts as well later on. Now here is the probability of tropical depression. And this is between August 11th and August 14th, by the way. As you can see within that darker red region, we have a 90 to 100% chance. You can also see that we have a 90 to 100% chance there east of the Eastern Caribbean. That is our second cyclone. So this one is also expected, according to this model, to become a tropical depression at least. Super interesting there. Probability of tropical storm uh, for the 11th through the 14th, we have about a 40 to 50% chance of this one regaining that tropical storm intensity, according to this model, uh, which is around 50 50, just below. Uh, but we also have a 30 to 40% chance of this one there uh, east of the Eastern Caribbean becoming a tropical storm as well, which is super interesting. As we move on and take a look at the 13th through the 16th, chances increase a little bit for our main tropical storm Fred right now. Uh, we move up to a 50 to 60% chance of tropical storm status. Uh, and for this one there, that would be pretty much located near Puerto Rico. Again, an identical track uh, at about the 13th through the 16th sometime in that time frame. We would have about a 40 to 50% chance of that tropical storm status now with that one. However, probability of, of hurricane according to this model is zero for both, uh, which is good news for this point. Well, it's zero to 10% chance. It never completely rules it out, obviously, but uh, there is a zero to 10% chance. And then obviously... As we move towards the 14th through the 17th, you can see that second cyclone 
Uh, this just shows you the track, by the way. But we see a 90 to 100% chance of tropical depression status there offshore of Florida for Fred. And then there to the east of Puerto Rico for the second cyclone. As you can see, this one eventually, because we can see the, that Fred is basically located near North Carolina or further north on this frame. But we see our second cyclone is heading towards the Bahamas or Florida. So a nearly identical track there with that second one. This isn't unheard of, and it is actually very common with these cyclones that develop around the same time. The steering patterns stay the same, so it makes sense that they would follow a very close track. Uh, I'm, I'm really expecting that to be the case. I, th I think that's just a common thing in general, really. It's not that odd, uh, but it is interesting because sometimes it's not that way. So it is it is kind of a special thing. Uh, now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're actually going to move on and we're going to take a look here at our uh, spaghetti model guidance for this tropical storm, Fred. Now, here we are taking a look at some of that spaghetti model guidance for Fred. We're only going to take a look at the European model here and then all of the individual models because uh, basically the GFS model and the Canadian model, what, they're, what they've been doing is spreading it out too much. I think there's lower confidence there and that's part of the problem. Uh, so I really just didn't feel like showing those because we have a much more organized European model and then a much more organized individual models. And I think that tells you guys enough. The GFS is showing anywhere from Texas to Maine. Uh, same story with the Canadian, and that's very typical for them. Uh, but the mean average still shows it hitting the Florida Panhandle, which is what is exceedingly likely at this point. But the European model is much more reeled in, uh, and it just has a much more uh, specific forecast here. Its members are much more on board with each other. So according to this model, it scrapes to the north of Cuba, and then it might scrape along that western coast of Florida. We also have a couple showing it offshore of the east coast, which is a much stronger solution, by the way. The waters are more favorable there. Uh, and then also we have a few that have it hitting Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama. But the most likely outcome is a Florida impact, uh, really undoubtedly. Uh, here is our individual models, and it's basically the same thing. A lot of these have it scraping along Cuba. Uh, some of them have it going straight over Cuba, which would obviously weaken it further. And then some of these have that kind of sweet spot, which would be it heading north of Cuba, south of Florida, and into the Gulf, and kind of lingering in there, uh, which would allow it to strengthen further and longer. Uh, and that's obviously would be a really bad thing. Here is that new Invest, which is Invest 95L, which is our next storm. And as you can see, we only have a few models on board so far, but they're all taking it towards Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and it remains to be unknown. It, it, really, we don't know yet if this one is going to really take the track of Fred uh, or if it's just for now going to head in the same direction and then kind of take a turn. Here's the intensity model guidance for Fred. And as you can see, they have it hovering around that tropical depression, tropical storm line until about uh, 72 hours out. And then it just really takes off from there towards day five, towards a stronger tropical storm. And we actually have uh, four models, I think, no, three on board with a hurricane category one. We even have one taking it towards category two. I'm sure those models actually have it heading way further into the Gulf for longer, and that's why they're calling for that. Now, most likely arrival time of winds. Take a look at this, pause it, feel free to do so for your area. I highly recommend you do so. Here is the five day graphical tropical weather outlook for that Invest 95L. By the way, we have a 30% chance over the next five days of development for now. Here's the total rainfall for you guys, and you can literally tell where this storm tracks, okay? If you're in the reds there, or sorry, no, if you're in the yellows, let's start with the yellows. If you're one, that's, that's about one to two inches of rainfall there, yellows and oranges. Once we move up into the reds, that's about two to five inches of rainfall. So that's for a lot of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, and even New Jersey. Uh, now, once we move up into those kind of brownish, grayish shades, I guess they're more like browns. Uh, that's where we're at about 5 to 10 inches of rainfall. Uh, and this model is indicating that there is areas of 10 inches plus scattered in there. So that is obviously a major flooding concern when you start to talk about that level of rainfall. And then even our accumulated maximum wind gusts, you can see on screen where we're at. If you're anywhere in the blues, you're under 34 miles per hour. Greens is 34 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, those yellows and reds is going to be anywhere from 50 to 70 miles per hour there for Florida and Georgia, which is obviously uh, going to cause, be, basically it's going to be a concern for wind damage to say the least. For today's confidence tab, we were at a five out of six. We moved up to a five from a four. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is going to happen with this one? And Ethan Galeski said basically what my thoughts are. I think it'll weaken as it goes over the Caribbean. 
Then when it enters into the Gulf, it could become a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane, and I think I alluded to that earlier as well. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Faligo, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Kernenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.